so currently I am a company commander in medical recruiting. I was just in patient care um, working as a physical therapist, but I got this opportunity to serve as a company commander. So now I'm in more of a leadership administrative role, um, just kind of helping talk about Army medicine and the different experiences that we have and the opportunities that there are within Army medicine. Welcome to the Army Grand Round. Experience Army Medicine with our host, Sergeant First Class Phillips. Well, good afternoon, Captain Christ. How are you today? Doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I hear you're traveling also today. Yes. yes Hopefully we are. the weather is nice. It's cool and rainy up here in Seattle. So. Yeah, it's okay right now. We're in Phoenix, but we'll be going to Flagstaff this afternoon. So Lovely. Some snow, maybe? No snow. It doesn't sound like we're, snow is in the forecast, but maybe there'll still be some on the ground from the previous storm, but we'll see. I'm still excited. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about your current position that you hold? Yeah. So currently I am a company commander in medical recruiting. Um, I was just in patient care. Um, working as a physical therapist, but I got this opportunity to serve as a company commander. So now I'm in more of a leadership administrative role, um, just kind of helping talk about Army medicine and the different experiences that we have and the opportunities that there are within Army medicine. Very cool. And is this your first leadership opportunity? Yes. So my first formal leadership, um, when I, at my previous duty station, I was a physical therapist, but I was the assistant chief within our clinic. Um, so we had our OIC or our officer in charge, and then I was right below him helping um, kind of run the clinic and help with that administrative aspect so that it was easier for him. Very cool. So how many soldiers and civilians are you responsible for? We have 31 currently in our company, 31 soldiers. Um, and then we have two civilians. Very cool. And they're all right there with you or are you all geolocated? No. So our company is a little bit different than other companies. We are geographically dispersed and our company as a whole covers nine different states. Um, we have six total recruiting stations within Colorado, Arizona, Nevada, and Texas. Very cool. And you're responsible for the recruitment for healthcare professionals in that area, right? Yes, that awesome. is correct. So now let's tie that into what you do with Army Medicine. So how long have you been employed by the U.S. Army as a physical therapist? So I have been in the Army for almost four years. So I commissioned in January of 2020. And I hear you are not new to the footprint, right? Like Correct. Yes. So I am originally from Southern California. So my recruiting station was a Santa Ana medical recruiting station um, from LA Company. And your recruiter still here with us today. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yeah. What brought you into the Army? Because you were a direct accession, correct? Yes, that is correct. So I went to physical therapy school as a civilian. I graduated and then I completed a one year orthopedic residency with Kaiser Permanente, um, a hospital out in Southern California. And then after that, I was working in outpatient orthopedics and just didn't feel like I was working with the patient population that I wanted to and didn't feel like I was able to utilize everything that I learned in physical therapy school and during my residency with the patients that I was able to see. Um, and my, both my grandparents were Air Force and then my dad was in the army. And so one day during a family discussion, it got brought up about joining the military, whether it be army, Air Force or another branch. Um, and I am so glad that conversation got brought up because I cannot imagine, imagine it any other way at this point. And obviously you have peers that are still in the civilian sector. So you see what you do versus what they do. If we're going to talk about similarities, not necessarily mm -hmm. the things that make us different and unique, we'll get to that, but the right. similarities, what is, what is patient care? What does your day look like? Is, is it at all the same? Yeah. So I feel like day to day, it's 
pretty much the same. Um, I'm working in the same setting that I was working in as a civilian when I was working as an army physical therapist. Um, outpatient orthopedics is very common on the civilian side and on the army side as well. Um, so patient population in general is the same, but the patients that you're working with are kind of what's different. Um, the other similarity, the clinic that I was working at when I was working as a civilian had a very similar setup. Um, and I was fortunate for that in the, in, like we had one-on-one -on -one patient care for the entire time that I was working as a civilian physical therapist. Um, and it's the same in the army where on the outside though, like the realistically it's hard to work in a clinic that is directly one-on-one -on -one and you don't have to pass along to the PT assistant or a PT aid. I think that's something, you know, to really maybe emphasize for the folks that are considering army medicine versus civilian practice, right? Is yeah, absolutely. What work life balance looks like in a patient care, maybe? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So patient care, like I see the same amount of patients when I'm working in the army as I would on the civilian side. Um, realistically, I would see about 12 total patients in a day. Um, in the army where on the civilian side, it could be 12 to 16, if not more. Um, and I feel like 12 to 16 is kind of, if you're lucky. Um, when I was working, even though I was primarily working one-on-one -on -one as a civilian, there were different clinics where I would have four patients at the same time and just kind of have to pass along my patient over and over to someone else to finish their care. Um, and that as a physical therapist got very frustrating because you're not able to like utilize everything that you learn. Like you're able to share your knowledge with the assistant or the aide, whoever is continuing to take them, but you don't get to, to show it directly to the patient. Um, so that was something that was difficult. I think one benefit that I have really like to me, it's the largest benefit working as an army physical therapist is the autonomy that we have. Um, on the civilian side, I recall being so restricted to what the physician would allow us to do, what the referral said, um, and kind of solely what that patient was coming in to see us for. Where on the Army, referrals don't matter. We don't have to deal with insurance companies. Like all of that is non existent. But then also, we're allowed to put in referrals directly to other specialty providers. We can order imaging, we can order certain medications and really allow for a better access to care for that patient. So instead of preventing them from getting the services they need, we can we can give them that, those services right away. Um, within a couple of days of them seeing us, they can get into another specialty provider that they need to. And that really is the one of the biggest benefits, right? Like as a patient. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I remember when I was working as a civilian, I had so many patients where I thought that they had other musculoskeletal conditions going on and needed to see an orthopedic surgeon or needed advanced imaging. And I was stuck because I couldn't do that for them. And it ended up being like, hey, you need to go back and see your primary care physician, tell them that this is what we're recommending. And then hopefully they, they help you with that. And so it ends up being a month on end process rather than them getting the care that they need within a matter of days. Yeah, and that's absolutely outstanding, really, right? Yeah. Um, now, you talk to, we're talking a lot about clinical settings, mm -hmm. right? But there are different types of settings for physical therapists, and absolutely. especially with the new H2F, and I'll let you kind of get into that a little bit more. Yeah. Can you break that down for, for that maybe atypical? Assignment? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So other opportunities include like working in a neuro rehab clinic or a TBI clinic or working with burn patients. Um, but then, as you mentioned, there is that H2F unit, which is a holistic health and fitness, um, which is really expanding within the army. And one thing that is so beneficial for us as physical therapists is it's a collaborative approach. So it has physical therapists, dietitians, occupational therapists, athletic trainers, all working together to encompass the entire patient and the entire soldier as one. So instead of just having tunnel vision and looking at one specific body part, we're able to come together and look at them all together. Um, I think something else that is so beneficial is on the civilian side, a lot of the time we're dealing with chronic conditions and 
um, conditions from like having poor posture and desk setup and very kind of sedentary conditions um, where with this H2F unit allows us to work on the preventative aspect of it. So being able to educate all of our soldiers and all of our patients on how to properly have set things up or how to properly do a deadlift so that they don't get hurt during the ACFT and things like that um, to focus on that prevention rather than that overuse and that chronic condition. And prevention is the key, right? If we hear anything all day, every day, that really is, you know, Absolutely. where we yeah. Yeah. What would you say your favorite thing is about your job? So I think as a physical therapist in the army, one thing that has been like, I love the most is, I mean, it's hard to pick just one, but the autonomy, like we talked about earlier, I think the autonomy is so beneficial, but also there's so many different opportunities and directions that I can go as an army physical therapist. Um, so not only do I have those continuing education classes that are readily available to me, um, I have, fellowships and residencies that are available to me that aren't as accessible on the civilian side. But then also just being able to recognize whether I want to take on more of a leadership role or whether I want to just stay as a physical therapist is very valuable. I feel like as a civilian physical therapist, you kind of get to a point in your, you hit a plateau and you can't really expand. You can't really grow. You just, it is the same thing day after day. Um, and just continuing to see patients and you get into a routine, which is good, but it doesn't allow for any clinical growth or self-growth either. Um, so for me, that aspect has been very beneficial that I have been able to take on a leadership opportunity and been able to grow in ways that I wouldn't have even ever imagined. You mentioned really briefly about the education opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now you came with a residency already in your pocket. Uh, I did. Other folks may not, or CSCS and things like that, right? Yeah. So if, I, if I'm a physical therapist and I want to come to the army, I have to pay out of my own pocket to be able to do those things? No. So the army has residencies and fellowships that are at no cost to us. Um, so the orthopedic residency, because it's an army wide orthopedic residency, it is somewhat virtual and somewhat in person. Um, you'll have a mentor that will be in person at the clinic that you're working at, but in general, like all of the different soldiers that are in this residency will kind of come together virtually and um, talk about different, different things and research and stuff like that. Um, and that is at no cost. That residency doesn't add on to your time in service or what you owe at all after. Um, the fellowship is similar, but a little bit different. So the fellowship is a longer period of time. And because it's a longer period of time, um, it does add to your time and service that you owe after, but it's still at free to co free cost to you. And you're still getting your normal pay if you're a captain or lieutenant or a major, whenever you're going through that red or that fellowship course as well. That's a great point that you brought up, like you're still getting paid, but can we elaborate, can you elaborate, please, a little bit more on the benefits, compensation, you know, how that relates? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so coming from Southern California, the cost of living is super high. I have student loans from PT school and getting paid, you get similar to other states, but I feel like California is one that tends to pay more than some of the other states. Um, so to start with me coming in as a physical therapist, already having my license, um, I received a loan repayment. So I signed up for three years of active duty. And for all three of those years, I was given $40,000 to go directly towards my student loans. Um, Granted, physical therapy school is very expensive. So for me personally, it did not cover all of my loans. However, one thing that is beneficial is working for, or being in the army, working for the army, you are considered to be working for a nonprofit. And because of that, you can be a part of the public service loan forgiveness program. So even if the three years of loan repayment do not specifically pay off all of your, your loans, 
then you can do income driven payments for 10 years and then you are loan free for all of those which is very beneficial um but besides just like our normal monthly paycheck we're also given um funds to pay for our housing based on the area and the zip code that we're stationed in um, but then we're also given money as well for food um, and that of course changes and increases with dependents and things like that so for me taking into consideration the cost of living and having to pay for health insurance and everything like that because health insurance is free and as a soldier in the army so we don't have to pay for any of that but when i compare what i'm making now in the army compared to what i did on the civilian side for me it's pretty comparable um but not having to pay for rent and things like that is what kind of sets it apart that's awesome it really is and you know especially with the way economy and stuff is today it's important for folks to see you know there's another option maybe they consider in benefit you know benefits wise cost of living wise it really does kind of balance out but absolutely. at the end of the day you get to do some really cool things right oh absolutely so what would you say has been the coolest experience that you've ever been able to have while you've been serving yeah absolutely i think to start one thing that has been really exciting kind of cool for me in general is just being able to see areas of the united states and that i wouldn't have necessarily picked on a map to go to. Um, it has been really cool. Like our initial training was in Oklahoma and I had never been to Oklahoma before. I had no idea what to expect, but it was neat and fun to be able to explore that. Um, but then as a physical therapist, for me, the coolest thing is being able to see your patients kind of from start to finish. Um, I had one patient specifically that came in to see me we determined he needed to have surgery. So I was able to sit in on the surgery, watch a surgery, and then I got to see him recover in outpatient orthopedics after that as his primary PT. So being able to see that whole kind of start to finish for this one patient has been the coolest thing for me. That's fantastic. And it, it's hard to, to do that, right? Especially yeah. move a lot and all those things. So that's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Now, do you know what's next on the horizon for you? So I'm still going to be here for a little bit longer, um, but I do want to participate in the manual therapy fellowship offered by the Army. So that um, application should be coming up, opening up shortly. So that's what, what I'm hoping to do. Awesome. Of course, best of luck on that. And I'm Thank sure you. you'll crush it. So that's cool. You. Now, if you, we've got different audience members that are looking at this, right? Mm -hmm. With the PT Baylor program mm -hmm. specifically, can you just touch a little bit on what that is and who we're looking for to apply for that program? Yeah, absolutely. So to start, I do not regret my path as to how I got here. But if I were in undergrad thinking about going to physical therapy school, Army Baylor would have been top on my list. Um, the reason being is because not only do they provide a great education, but they set you up for everything after you're done with school. Um, so going to Army Baylor, you are a soldier. So you're getting paid the entire time you're going to physical therapy school. Um, not to mention the Army is paying for your entire physical therapy school. So you can come out of PT school with zero loans and already saving up for a house or have already saved up for whatever you want to invest in, whether it be a house or something else. Um, and then after that, you work for four years and you are moving on your way. Um, you can either stay in the army and continue with that, or you can start to work as a civilian and having the army experience on the civilian side. Like if you go to physical therapy school and you commit your time and you realize that this isn't what you want to do anymore and you don't want to be in the army anymore, the, ha, having the army as your prior employer sets you up for almost any job that you would want on the civilian side if you decide that that's what's for you. Um, yeah. Perfect. Well said, ma'am. <laughs> Go Bears, right? So with that, now let's talk a little bit to those folks that were like you. 
like mm -hmm. already working, already somewhat established or already established, why should they consider the army as their next occupation? Yeah, I think, so I try to tell all of my physical therapy friends the benefits of it and all of them see it, but then they're like, but I can't do the X, Y, and Z. And I think one thing that everyone should know, or like one thing that I try to tell everyone is that at the end of the day, like, yes, you are a soldier in the army, but you are a physical therapist and you are going to continue to be a physical therapist if that's what you want to do. But you don't have to deal with the headaches that you have to deal with on the civilian side. You don't have to deal with those insurance companies. You don't have to deal with the physicians that won't write a referral or you know, dealing with any of the nuances that you have to as a civilian physical therapist. I also just think that civilian PT is a little bit different in the sense that like sometimes if you're in a really good clinic, you get that camaraderie and you find those mentors and you find the people that you can bounce ideas off of. In the army, you don't even have to like think twice about that. So not only do you get to meet a lot of different people from all over the world that you wouldn't have necessarily met, whether they're PTs, OTs, you know, dietitians, PAs, whatever their job description is, but you meet so many physical therapists and they become truly lifelong friends. And I have remained in contact with all of my PT friends. I've remained in contact with all my OT friends, every person that I've come across and had an army school with or anything like that, really they do become lifelong friends and you have that kind of shared understanding and that common ground right away that nothing else really matters. I just want to say thank you to all the listeners out there for your time on this amazing podcast with Captain Kreitz. If you're just catching up with us, we just interviewed Captain Kreitz, a physical therapist who is currently serving as a U.S. Army healthcare recruiter. She described their story, the benefits the Army offers, and what opportunities await for those that are considering joining. On the next episode of the Army Grand Rounds, we're interviewing Captain Emerson in his role as a critical care nurse. If you like this podcast, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.